Hi, Moni. Um, this is just a, a very quick guide to doing a DIY mail. Um, I'll also just focus on how to do the multi campaigns. Um, although I would also just like to quickly just mention that we've had some feedback from other agents with regards to doing more than one campaign in a mail. And um, it seems that sometimes one tends to bombard the client with too much information. So for any future mail outs that you would like to do with multi-product campaigns, I would suggest to try to keep it to a maximum of two campaigns um, or if need be three, but I would not go beyond that. Um, as sometimes it's far too much information for the client to actually take on. Okay, but having said that, right, as we've logged into your account, you will see here that this is your dashboard. So this is where you can access all of your templates that are available in the Magellan library. And then of course, if you want to build something from scratch, then we will click on build it yourself. Okay. So now we are in and you can see that this is in your Leisure user account um, and here is your header and here are all of your settings. So how we usually like to start off with a mail, depending on what the type of content is, we always like to start off with either an image underneath your header or a video. So once we've got your image, now the important thing with images is that images need to be no more than 200 kilobytes. Um, the reason for this is that when images start to become too large, then this flags your client servers as spam. Um, and also, especially if you're going to be doing more than one image, which is most likely in a mail out, um, these images tend to accumulate and then the size of the mail becomes quite large. Also, if an image is too large, then some email clients or email programs do not download the image as well. And then say, for instance, if your email is just one image, then it won't download and there will be no content in the mail at all. Or show broken images, which is quite off-putting for clients to view. So we always recommend for images to be no larger than 200 to maximum 220 kilobytes. Um, when uploading to your mail. So for example, we will just go choose file. We will look for the image, select open. And then we can see here it will load. It might take a while as my internet is quite slow. Apologies for that. And then especially with images, straight under your header, we like to use full width. So then you will click on the image padding, then you will select full, and then you will see it will go nicely within the boundaries of your email. Then we always want to click save. It will save automatically, but if anything happen in the interim before auto save happens. So I really highly recommend to just hit the save mail whenever possible. Right, now, so while we are here, you can see that this will automatically be added to your build your own mail, and you might want to use it as, at all. So all you need to do is hover over and this is how you can duplicate a section that you have created or delete. So we want to delete that and then we're going to save quickly. Right, then we're going to go back to build. So usually we like to have a little bit of heading to tell the clients what this mail is about because if they read it they'll see that it is from you Then they'll see the really nice hero image and tasks to continue to read on and then they want to know a little bit more about what, what is the mail about, what is the heading. Um, so then we're going to drag in our text box and then say for instance so we're going to backspace and then say the title is always see emails. Right, so with headings like this, especially underneath the hero image, there are different types of headings you can use from. So we this heading, which doesn't necessarily work in the build view because it's colored in, in white text, so we never use this one. We've got heading two, which is a little bit larger. Then we've got a subheading, which is then a little bit smaller. Subheading two, which is even smaller. Then we've got setting, which is always one of my favorites, especially in the beginning of a mail. And then we've also got section heading two, which is something you can use. But just a little tip, when you're 
using section head two, always make sure then that your image is detailed because you don't want your lines to be right on top of your image. Just from a display point of view, it doesn't display 100% nicely. So if using the section heading two, then it is always advisable to then have your image at a default instead of full width. Okay, so if we go back here, and then obviously we've got caption, which is more for um, images where you've got a gallery and you want to say click on the image above to view the gallery, or if you've got um, four or five tiles of images and you just want to get a little explanation of where the image is, then the caption option is always the best option to use. So for the purpose of mail, then we'll use section heading, and the text box, we will always make sure it's in the line for section headings um, you can fold if you would like and you can italicize it if you would like and even underline it although we hardly ever use underlining um, in section headings and, and so on and forth but you can use it if need be so then we hit save and then we can carry on so with regards to the adding in your content underneath what I would always suggest is the content that you are adding in for it to always be left aligned if it is a lot of content. A rule of thumb is to have four or five sentences per paragraph as well. So as you continue to write, we usually like to make sure that. Starting mail off we would usually like to see three to five sentences just to start your mail off. We usually also just give a little space under the section heading just so there's a little bit of a break everything on top of each other and it looks cramped. So we have our first paragraph, an example, and then we continue with our second paragraph with just nonsense that I'm writing and then continue and then say for instance you want to do a heading um, and then you can even add bullet points so in your intro it's very easy to create a very good flow regards to a good hero image, a good title and section heading underneath your hero image which is explaining what the client can expect um, within the email. It is always important that your paragraphs are no more than five sentences one after the other and, and then just take a break and then to continue um, and then you can do your bullet points and then I always like to just bold the sentence above the bullet point so it catches the client's eye and then what you can do is we hit save and then what you can do is you can add in a button to say ask us for more information on our on our travel Now, what I'm going to do is um, I will be able to switch on a feature for your mail bolts where you're able to view the standard inquiry form. Because at the moment with a DIY um, build, you're only able to use the button, which is a mail to button. So when a client clicks on this in the email browser, then your email um, address will automatically pop up for them to send you an email directly to their email address to inquire. Um, but with a form is nice because they can fill out the form and they can write what they would like to inquire about. This also gets logged in um, your entries um, by your reporting and by your form entries. So it's nice to keep track of who has responded um, within your mail to an inquiry or if anybody has any extra questions. So that is how we usually like to start a mail. And obviously it's always important when you're doing an inspection to add in a divider. Now, say for instance, 
and of course hit save. So say for instance you would like to now add in um, either a product offering, then what we can do is we can add in a 100% layout, then we can add some text, and it can be um, amazing Europe. Now I would like to center align um, product offers because we want to make this heading bold. So we can either go with a section heading, which is quite um, bold and it gives quite a statement, or we can also use section heading 2, which is something that we also use quite often. And then you can always bold text. And then usually we can either add in an image or a video. And then what we can do is add in a little bit more of a description. about the product um, and then what we can do is if there is a map involved with this offering then we'll usually use 50 50 format and then we will usually use a gallery and then obviously some text next to it now with the gallery option um, this allows the client to actually click on the image and it will enlarge so if the map looks quite small within the email then what we would do is we would then add a little caption underneath and this way then the client can we can add in here click on the map above to enlarge and then you can write a little bit of text about um, tour highlights and then you can bullet point these and then obviously add a map here and then what we would do is we would add in another 100% and we would add a button and we would say click here to inquire. Right, so now obviously the click here to inquire will be a mail to button for now. But what you can do is you will see another block here that says form and then you'll be able to select the standard inquiry form, which is what we we usually use in our mail bill. So what you can do is you can press save and then of course here there's a little bit of a gap. Now because there's no divider here then this will look a little bit on top of one another. So you can either use a divider in between so that the information is not all on top of each other or what you can do is you can add a text block on top of your inquiry block. You just take out the click here to view text and um, then this will act as a divider. Okay, so now, if this is all that you are going to be building, it's, it's just one offer for your whole uh, mail out. So you've given a description about the destination or about the amazing offer that is on sale. And then you've given actual products. You've given an inquiry um, form for clients to be able to reply to. Then we always make sure that there's a divider just before the end of your mail and we hit save. Now what's also very important is as you go along building your mail, it's always important to see how the mail would look like in your email client. So we'd always click preview link. And then you're able to see here, this is how your mail would look in your client's browser views and possibly more likely in their email programs as well. So we can see here, there's your header, here's your hero image, here is your um, section heading, here's your intro paragraph, here's your general um, ask us for more information in case the client does not click further into your mail to look at the product. And then here is your product. And obviously, because we haven't put the dividers in and we haven't put in any images, it's not going to look 100%. But um, this is generally how your format will then look. So now, if we wanted to add one of the templates to this, what we would do is we'd go back to your dashboard. So we 
know that this, oh, very importantly, as you can see it's very easily overlooked, is to go to your settings and to actually name your campaign. So it will automatically default to Magenta and Black Canvas. So if you send your mail out as is, then your subject line will be Magenta and Black Canvas. Your social pre-headed description will also be Magenta and Black Canvas and there will be no social thumbnail which means that if you ever had to use this link in Facebook then there would be no um, pre-header there would be no image to show anything or description about this email so we would want to change the campaign name to always receive and then our subject line would be very importantly with subject lines is um, we don't recommend for subject lines to be all in capitals as this tends to flag um, servers and email programs that have an email coming through in spam so it's important for the subject line to be to the point for it to be enticing but for it to not be saved in capital letters because this may flag them as a spam mail. Then what we usually do is social pre here then this is the second part of your subject line essentially so what you can do is you can always take the first sentence um, from your intro paragraph and you can put it in by your pre here description and I usually just add um, three dots just to show that there's more to read um, and then obviously for your social thumbnail I would also usually use the hero image as the social thumbnail so then we would just choose this in again just wait for it to load right and then we press save so now we know that all our settings are complete we basically built our campaign now we want to add one of the templates on underneath just to reinforce this so now we go to dashboard And then say for instance we want to add in a little bit about you being an ATAS accredited agent. So then we would go preview, we would go start customizing. And then what I usually do is I usually press preview link. Okay, so this opens up another preview, a full preview of how the mail will look like. Then unfortunately with how things are with the DIY is you would have to basically rebuild and copy and paste all of this information in underneath the mail that you just built. So now we're going to go back to our global menu, we're going to go back to our drafts in your build view. And then we're going to click on never miss another email, which is there's two here now, so we need to just make sure we go into the right one that we've opened. So basically, these how these drafts are named is according to the subject line. So let's just have a look at if it's this one, because I know we added in a social pre -header. Okay, that's not the correct one. Then it would be this one. Okay, so here's the email that we built earlier. Now, what we would do is um, we would then go to our other tab and we would then go and click on the video. We would press share and copy the link. Then we would go back. Add in your 